I have this Pixel 6 Pro that I received from another shop. Connecting this 6 Pro to my charger, it shows zero current consumption, which means that the charging circuit of this mobile phone is not just functioning at all, or maybe the battery has a problem. That's what I keep in mind before I open the phone to troubleshoot. So let me just go straight and talk about something. This phone had a shot and I thought that maybe it's just a normal shot that I removed from other pixels and other phones and the phone starts working until everything turned out to be very complicated. I'm going to walk you through how you can do proper troubleshooting. So what's the first thing I did? After dismantling the phone, I set my multimeter to continuity test mode. I test the direct reading of the battery connector that's a, a, a good reading for the VBAT line, 337, was that it? That's a very good reading for the VBAT line, that's okay. So now I use my DC power supply to inject voltage, uh, power on in voltage at the VBAT, which is the battery connector, right? So I inject 4.2 volt and you can see that a small current leakage and that's the current leakage that I was talking about. So when I saw this, I've, I've worked on a, a couple of pixels with this type of fault and it was very easy and it's very easy right now because I'm familiar, but this phone is different. So take a look. So that was a small current trigger. Like I said, the battery connector is within 337 direct reading and that reading is okay for the VBAT, like I said. So what do we do here? We locate the charging circuit of the mobile phone, locate the VPH line to check. We use our bit mapping to see the VPH, see all the lines from the charging, from the battery connector, as you can see, that's the battery connector. And we have this uh, fuse component here that should be a resistor or something. It acts like a fuse, I don't know. And we have this IC right here that's not what we are looking for what we are looking for that's where the, the, the vbat voltage gets into the charging ic then we get the vph so this vph line is the line that we are looking for right so i tested this line and there was a short right there and clicking on the line i can see the other part that the line is connected to so because there is a short there if you take a look you will see that we have to to find a short in this area right we have to use our rosin flux like we do in other videos use our rosin flux to see if you can easily detect the, the the component that is shorting by injecting voltage so we don't have a thermal camera we use rosin flux here so we inject the voltage to the shorting one of the shorting capacitors and as you can see nothing is heating up in a mobile pcb but you see that current draw from my DC power supply shows that there is something wrong with a mobile PCB. So again, I use my bit mapping to see all the components and the circuits that a VPH line is connected to. And if you turn to the other side of the PCB from the bit mapping, you will see that we have two power managers ICs here. We have a lot of sections here that the VPH line is connected to. That's why it's called the main power supply of the mobile PCB or the secondary line. All I had to do, I had to remove the shield from the other side of the PCB to see these two other two Parmanger ICs that have access to the VPH line in all sides, as you you can see right here in the in the bin mapping, right? So if you take a look, the, all the red red lines that you see here, the V bar, the VPH, sorry, is connected to all these red lines, and that's the line that is shorting. So from the other pixels, I remove a shot here in the other pixel that I uh, uploaded recently and we will do the same thing that I did with the other pixel inject voltage in the same capacitor because at times it's the same one but it's not the same capacitor right here but if you take a look at that other capacitor you can see that it's hitting right so we use our bin mapping to confirm if that's actually a component connected in parallel and uh, yeah we inject the voltage again and that's a capacitor connected in parallel so it's heating up which means that that capacitor is bad right so all we do we remove it i have already removed the capacitor just like that and very smooth and something happened the shot was gone but as soon as i connected the battery into the phone there was a shot again in the vph <laughs> so i had to Check the VPH was shorting here, completely, completely shorting. 
and I had to do the same thing that I did again. And surprisingly, we have that other capacitor just beside this capacitor shorting. The surprising thing is that the short was gone when I removed the first capacitor. But when I connected the battery to test the mobile PCB, the phone did not switch on. I tried checking and there was a short again. So that's not a problem. Let's go on then check uh, if there is a short after removing the second capacitor. That reading from my uh, multimeter is actually okay. In a VPH line, I tested a VPH line this time, not the VBAR. So that 300, was it 334? That was okay. I connected the screen to see if the phone will charge. And uh, the phone was not charging. Even though the short is gone, there is no short in a mobile PCB again. I try to connect it to my DC power supply to take a look, which is very important. Try to trigger. And that trigger is a very complicated trigger, but from my knowledge, that's a problem with the RAM. So we have the double mount CPU, we have the CPU and the RAM mounted on top of the CPU. And from my knowledge, the knowledge that I have, that particular reading has something to do with the RAM of this mobile PCB. So all I had to do, I had to remove the RAM. That's what I'm doing right here. I removed the RAM clean everything it had it had a lot of glue so i had to to clean the glue just like that and very smooth while you are watching i have good news thank you very much for helping me reach 60,000 subscribers here on youtube if in case you are watching this on youtube that's a, a lot of uh, subscribers amazing subscribers right so i'm so happy about that and because of that i will be giving my courses with a 60 percent discount for one month that's a lot so you will gain my courses right now with a 60 percent discount that discount will be available for one month so yeah <laughs> i think no one will want to miss this because you learn everything like this from my professional level course how i get to know if i have to do this or that so let's continue here well if you want the courses if you want these courses or my book the blog diagram master send me a message on whatsapp using the number right here on the screen so let's go on so as you can see, I'm cleaning the glue from the IC itself, which is the RAM. So I did not remove the CPU of this mobile phone. So I'm just uh, working on the RAM and what I want to do, I want to rebore the RAM. If you are wondering what, how I get to decide if the RAM was the, the problem causing that particular reading from my DC power supply, it's very hard, but with the knowledge, you will get to know this with the knowledge and the experience after working on a chip level components like the CPU, the RAM, the EMMC, you will be able to know that and also you learn about DC power supply reading for my courses and my book, The Block Diagram Master. So that's the the uh, RAM right there. I just created the solder balls and now I want to mount the RAM on top of the CPU. So keep in mind again, I did not recall the CPU, but if you have enough time, you should do, do it. So we do this based on how much we are being paid. You get, so I just mount the RAM right there. Just mount it, hit it just like that and very smooth. So just like that and yeah, it's okay. So after mounting the RAM, the phone showed sign of switching on, but it did not actually switch on. The phone was connected right into bootloader as soon as you try to switch it on. Nothing will show, but the phone will detect on my PC in bootloader. So because of this, I knew that there was something wrong with the mobile PCB. There was still something wrong with the mobile PCB. I tried looking for sure there was no short until I found this capacitor shorting this particular capacitor. A lot of short in this particular mobile PCB. I don't know what's happening. There is something wrong. Okay, that's not a problem. I use my bit mapping to locate the components that are connected to this capacitor. I don't know which line this is, but it deals with a certain amount of voltage. As you can see, the line goes straight to the power manager IC. I tried to look around to see if it connects to any component, but it seems it's connected to the power manager IC this other IC right here and two capacitors and that's all that I needed to know so that I will know exactly what I have to do right so what I did uh, I had this glue here I had to uh, clean the glue so that I will have access to that other capacitor that the line was connected to and also so that I can see 
how I can uh, do our normal injection right here. So I use my rosin flux again. I use it. And here I set a voltage to 2.5 volt because I don't know the amount of voltage that is line you see. So you need to start with the same voltage that from that capacitor 2.5 volt should be okay the size should be okay so you saw the capacitor was short and i removed it tested everything was good everything was good and actually i cleaned the pcb tried to switch on the phone the phone could detect in mtp mode as you can see from my device manager but no display <laughs> crazy right so i i tried to take a look at the display filter filters until i noticed that two of these filters were broken after testing with a multimeter i don't really know if this happened when i was removing the shield from the from this uh, section i don't know but they were broken two of them so all we have to do we do a jumper so take a look carefully and see how we do jumper the display the display filter so as you can see i jump out the first two that's number three so if you take a look, you will see those other sides at the corners. I don't link them with this cable that I'm connecting because those sides are GNZ, you get. So I jump, uh, if, you, if I zoom in, you will take a look and see that I don't connect the other side with these cables that I just sold out here. I use my glue. I place my glue in the section that I did the jumper in. Use my UV light to cure the glue. And there the jumper is okay. Just like that. And very smooth i tested these other filters and they were reading okay so we test the mobile pcb and it was working this was a lot of work <laughs> it was a lot of work right so it was working i was so happy about this until i even called the, the technician said the phone was working he called the customer when i coupled the phone the phone was not switching on again and when I tried to do basic check-in again in a mobile PCB, it showed that the charging IC itself of this mobile phone was shorting. I just let go. I tried my best. The phone was working. The phone was working until I coupled the phone and it stopped switching on. So I did not really feel bad about this because I worked on this phone for three days. I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what was causing all the short and all that. But from my own uh, uh, analysis, it shows that the, the charging IC of this mobile phone is the main cause of the shorting that was happening in this phone and the charging IC is now that I have to change it. But yeah, I, I, could not, I, I do not have that interest in working on it anymore and also I wasn't well paid to go extra mile checking the phone and all that. Well, I'm is my right here, you can follow for more content.